mother's not registered voter in Chicago. She was born and she passed away, so I We're going to call this meeting of the committee of the whole together this evening, and I'm going to ask she that the is, clerk huh? call the roll so we can establish the presence of the quorum. Alex. Here. Ammons. Ammons. Anderson. Here. Benzel. Here. Berkson. Here. Betts. Here. Carter. Coert. Esri. Here. Holderfield. Here. James. J. Here. Jones. Hey. Jones. Here. Here. Kurtz. Here. Langenheim. Here. McGinty. Here. Michaels. Here. Mosier. Nudo. 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 Hey. <laughs> O'Connor. Here. Petrie. Here. Quisenberry. Here. Richards. Present. Rosales. Saf. Schrader. Yes. Weibel. I do believe we have the presence of a quorum. Okay. Um, and the clerk will take note if anyone shows up that wasn't called on the roll. Um, I'd entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the Committee of the Whole for May 10th, 2011. So moved. Moved by Mr. James, seconded by Mr. Esri. Discussion. Additions or corrections? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed the same. Motion carries. Chair would entertain a motion to approve the agenda and any addendum. Moved by Ms. Petrie, seconded by Ms. Cowart. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed the same. Motion carries. Any public participation this evening? Thank you. Seeing none, communications from members of the board. Mr. Kurtz. Uh, I just want to say a thank you to Ms. Kat Bork. Uh, she's going to be leaving us. And I want to tell you that in the three and a half years I've been here, she has been irreplaceable. She's wonderful and has done tremendous work for this board, and I'm sure we all feel the same way. But where she's going and what she's going to be doing is wonderful, too. I want to wish her the best of luck, and I know that one day we will see Cat Board Attorney at Law Esquire as one of our, uh, perhaps, board members one of these days. Congratulations, Cat, and we wish you the best. Another one joining that <laughs> profession. <laughs> I'll help you with the bar. You'll never pass. <laughs> Any other communications from members of the board? Seeing none, Ms. Cowart, if, if you could uh, come up and address the committee regarding highway and transportation. thing we have on our agenda for highway transportation is the monthly report for the ta uh, county and township motor fuel taxes for May 2011. Move to receive and place on file. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? The next thing is the county engineer's report. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping items quickly. On resolutions one and two, um, the date of the letting was shown as, as the wrong date. Um, we have uh, changed that and forwarded, I believe, copies of the new resolutions to CAT. But instead of April 20th, 2010, it should be May the 26th of 2011. Some cutting, cutting and pasting errors there. Um, all of the uh, 
All of the bridge projects that are on here, which are items one, two, three, and seven, have come before you um, for bridge petitions as well as resolutions appropriating monies uh, for these projects. Um, I have passed out at each of your um, seats a copy of the bid tabs that show uh, the numerous bidders that we had on these projects. Um, and if there aren't any uh, big questions about any of these bridge projects, I've had a suggestion uh, from one of the board members that maybe we could do an omnibus motion for ones, two, three, and seven and approve all the bridge projects in one motion. As, as I was the suggester, I'll make that omnibus motion for one, two, three, and seven for approval, please. Second. Second. Uh, Sam. I know we're talking about bridges, but I was lucky enough to travel County Highway 23. Yeah. That is one rough road. Yes, it is. And uh, some of the people I know uh, in town and even in Gibson City were talking to me about it. Is there any plans in the future to do anything with that road? Um, it's definitely in our five-year plan. The issue that we have up there is there's a lot of narrow shoulders, deep ditches, and right-of-way issues. There was uh, movement afoot to 10 to 15 years ago to try to do something with that road. And uh, there was right-of-way that needed to be purchased to widen the shoulders in order to get it to state. Uh, IDOT standards and the engineer was not successful in securing that right of way so um, we need to get back into that mode and see uh, what we need to do up there. I know that's probably one of our poorest riding roads and one of our heavily traveled roads in the county as well. Yeah, it's pretty uh, chewed up right now. It's about like Murray Road ran tool but I guess one comment I'm just going to say it. that's why I sort of begrudge doing newer and other roads and places that I feel that we have roads we need to take care of. Okay, all in favor of having an omnibus uh, uh, vote for um, one, two, three, um, two, four, and four. seven. One, two, three, and seven. Say aye. 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 Anyone opposed to it? Okay. Um, Similarly, items four and five, these are not uh, highway or county projects. These are actually township projects. They're grade crossing protection fund projects um, where uh, the Illinois Commerce Commission has suggested that uh, the grade crossings be upgraded with lights and signals and it's up to the township to uh, do the road work approach on those projects. Uh, we grouped a bunch of those projects together and had a bid on the same day of May the 26th. Um, none of that money is actually coming directly from the highway fund. We will pay for it, but we'll get reimbursed through the Illinois Commerce Commission. They are township projects, but I, uh, since they are multiple township projects and multiple townships, um, the ICC wanted somebody to make an award of a contract, so I'm bringing that before you uh, to award those contracts as well and would like to take items four and five in one motion if we could. Brian. So moved, please. Second. Okay, it's been moved and second. It's open up for discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, item six, awarding the contract for the 2011 pavement striping of various county highways in Champaign County. Um, the uh, low bidder was Varsity Striping at 149,514.30. This is to stripe all the roads uh, that the county has, as well as some village streets, uh, such as in Savoy and Thomasboro and, and some of the townships where we get reimbursed directly from them for those costs. Um, it was a single bidder, but a uh, local company, the bid was well below the engineer's estimate, so I'd ask for your approval of that resolution. So moved. It's been moved and second, and it's open for discussion. Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Item number eight is a resolution authorizing the county board chair to sign the uh, cooperative agreement for the uh, 
member agencies of Kuats. Uh, this does not establish any kind of funding. It just basically lays out the uh, duties of all the different entities and talks about the voting members and the committee responsibilities for uh, for Kuats. Um, there's really nothing in here. It's just an agreement that has to be updated periodically for the uh, FHWA. Uh, nothing has changed tremendously, and like I said, there's no funding tied in this agreement. It's just for. Uh, so move. It's been moved can, uh, and second. It's open for discussion. <laughs> Carol and Dan Patsy. I just want to ask um, the Kuats agreement. Um, uh, all of the entities are together and they're partners on trying to develop a, a good transportation system for the entire area. Uh, at one point, I think I was attending the meetings at one point when it was downtown Champaign, and I was never clear on do they actually establish transportation uh, for like Rantoul, for instance, uh, coming into the Champaign-Urbana area or what the purpose would be for Kuats is a metropolitan planning organization, which means everything within uh, the Champaign-Urbana urbanized area. So it includes Savoy. We're getting real close to having, uh, having Tolono in there because they're getting real close. But it's basically Savoy, Champaign, and Urbana. It actually goes out to Bonville, but does not go out to Muhammad or up to Rantoul. It's just for the metropolitan planning area, which is established by the Federal Highway Administration based on um, the number of people that are in the uh, metropolitan area. And so this is designed to improve public transportation, correct? Well, it's for all transportation, not only uh, mass transit, but for roads, bridges, uh, bicycles, all different types of transportation in the metro area. That's it. <clears throat> Uh, yes, an information question. Uh, the establishment of the MPO and thus Kuats, are there guidelines and what establishes this agency as to what uh, entities are included in the agency? Um, there are guidelines to the FHWA. We're very unique in that we actually have the university in our MPO. Um, a lot of college towns don't have the university, but our university actually owns roads, uh, which is kind of unique as well. We just don't have the city maintaining and owning the roads through the university. But yeah, the other, the other entities are set up through the FHWA. So are you explaining to us uh, the foundational guideline as to what entities are invited to be part of Kuats is based on who owns the roads? It's ba yeah, it's basically who, who does services within the metropolitan planning area. You've got MTD, obviously. You've got U of I, Champaign-Urbana, the county. Um, we have a number of different agencies. So it's whoever basically touches the transportation system in the community. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. <clears throat> Anyone opposed? Um, one last thing um, under other business. Uh, there was a resolution that we inadvertently left off of the uh, committee, the whole agenda. It was placed on your table there. It's a resolution establishing a class two truck route for county highways 11 and 32. If you remember um, a few board meetings ago, we uh, passed a resolution authorizing the chair to sign a uh, an agreement between IDOT and the county um, to do ro the road work on County Roads 11 and 32. That is a federally funded project where we are actually getting what they call TARP money, which is Truck Access Route Program money from IDOT in order to match the federal dollars. And when you get that type of money, um, you have to design the roadway to meet uh, load limits of 80,000 pounds, and thus you have to pass a resolution establish establishing a class two designated truck route, which in this day and age um, doesn't mean a lot because basically every route everywhere in the state is an 80,000 pound truck route based on the state legislature. So this is really a formality that IDOT has us do. It used to be a big deal that we were establishing an 80,000 pound truck route, but this is a formality in order to uh, get the truck access route program money. We got to go out and post it as a class two truck route after the project is completed. But um, this resolution needs to be down to IDOT.
that in June. That's why it um, is we would like for it to go directly to the uh, county board on June 23rd. Move approval of the formality. Second. <laughs> okay, approved and second is open for discussion. Uh, Michael. Just real quickly on the back of this resolution, um, it says Marty Halton instead of Gordy. Before he signs it, Marty. you might want to change it. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Any more discussion? I'm not sure you can move it. I, I, the, he, Jeff is just letting you know it will be placed on the county board agenda without being approved at Committee of the Whole first. I'm, I think a motion might be out of order. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> and that, um, that's all I have. Okay, then. Madam Chair. Yes. I think you should ask the mover and the seconder to withdraw the motion. So I withdraw the motion. Clean. Withdraw. Okay. Accept it. Okay. There's nothing really to go on consent agenda because everything was approved. Everything goes on a consent agenda. I mean, yeah. go on a consent agenda. <laughs> Regular agenda, yeah. Right. Okay. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Finance item A1, a budget amendment 110025 for 43,703 to accommodate scheduled aerial photography contract for GIS consortium members. Is there a motion for approval by Stan, seconded by Michael? Any discussion? Patsy. Um, I asked this during caucus meeting and just as a, a general source of information, uh, would it be possible when we have? I <clears throat> Items like this, they are revenue neutral, but some indication as to the source of the funding. Um, I believe you can see the source of the funding on the budget amendment itself. It is coming from the various entities who are member agencies of uh, GIS consortium. They're each paying their fair contribution towards this aerial photography. Anything else? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Second item, an amendment 110026 for 281,211. These are road improvements at railroad crossings at various locations. Is there a motion for approval by John? Second, Second by Geraldo. Discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. The third item is an amendment 110022 for 500 bucks from the corner. Reimbursement of funds from the sale of the corner 1995 van. Is there a motion for approval by Brad? Is there a second by Al? Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> motion carries for the Grateful Dead van. <laughs> Fourth item is amendment 110027 for $34,000 in appropriations. This is to create a line item to pay interest on building construction bonds. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. By Stephanie, seconded by Stan. Is there a discussion? Diane. I may be wrong, but would there not already be a, a line item in the budget for this? I don't understand why we're creating. Because you approved the budget the same month that you approved the issuance of these bonds, and we had no idea of knowing what the principal and interest payments would be. So it was not included in the 2011 budget. It will be in the 2012. 2012. Okay, thanks. Any other discussion on this item? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Next up, B1, uh, the Sheriff's Office, the COPS hiring program request. Is there a motion for second. approval by Al? Is there a second? Second. By Jan. Discussion. Chris. I'd just like to express my thanks to the Sheriff and his staff for uh, finding, uh, at least potentially finding other sources of funding for the county during these difficult times. I mean, if we can really get $440,000 to help uh, improve the staffing of the Sheriff's Department, that's uh, the music to all of our ears, I think. Very good. Any questions for the sheriff? He's here tonight as well. Al? Alan? Little Al compared to <laughs> Big Al? I have nothing. No, uh, I just had a question, Sheriff, about um, this covers 
uh, salaries, benefits? This covers salaries and benefits for three years. Equipment? Um, no, but we've we've got you equipment. Got we've got used cars. I mean, yeah, we you can got cover the all that. Everything yeah. else, so correct. No other questions? Thank you. Uh, questions, Patsy, then Carol. Uh, well, okay, after the three years, uh, where's the funding going to come from? That, to some extent, is, is quite frankly unknown. The sixth year, my guess is, with benefits and salary, those two deputies combined will be about $160,000. Now, right now, we have a $10 million budget. Can I fudge a little here and there? I don't know. A lot depends on gas prices and, and the number of prisoners I house at that time, uh, or the next sheriff, whoever has it. But, I mean, there is no guaranteed source of funding uh, other than, and I will say this, when the budget cuts came along and the economy went sour, um, first off, there was a federal grant, but at the time, Ms. Busey and I talked, and we had to be certain we were going to let people go. And at that point when we had to apply for the grant, we couldn't say for sure. Well, it happened after that, so we missed the first grant. What we've done, because we we've lost a couple road deputies because of the budget, we also lost a couple for other reasons, you know, normal attrition, and we've kind of delayed filling some of that. What I did was take our street crimes unit, uh, that's a group of three deputies and one sergeant. They primarily work drugs, but they also do a lot of directed patrol, like, for example, if I have, uh, let's say, a burglary problem in Scottswood, I can pull them, change their shift, and they could work Scottswood for a week in a row walking, basically walking a beat or whatever we want. They're a very useful move-around tool. When they are working the primary drug enforcement, because of the nature of drugs, besides confiscating drugs and guns, uh, they also inherently confiscate cash and other assets. Uh, just to give you an idea, when that unit was up and running, uh, on an average, on a yearly average, we confiscated about 23,000, I'm sorry, drug dealers donated to the county about $23,000, and they gave us about $27,000 in other assets out of the goodness of their heart per year. I cannot, I'll be honest, I cannot use that money for salaries, but I can use it to defer other costs and then shift. But, but, but no, I can't cover, and I don't know exactly where we'll get 160000 That's four years down the road. Hopefully, the economy will improve. Carol, passing. Anything else? Thank you. Thanks, Sheriff. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, the county clerk's office, an ordinance establishing statutory fees for marriage and civil union licenses. Is there a motion for approval by Lorraine? Is there a second by Al? Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. D, um, I've, Cam is here tonight, and he and I have talked ahead of time. Uh, the record. My suggestion is that he overview these five related items, and if it's agreeable to you, you might be interested in uh, passing them in an omnibus fashion. But Cam, if you could, come on up, and before we make motions, we'll have him overview these five items together. Quick question, Brendan. Stan. Do I have to abstain since I'm on the Chris advisory board? Mm -hmm. No. If I get in trouble, I'll repeat that. We're guessing no. Thank you. Cam, please. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, these uh, five items that are on here are all related to uh, the rural transit, provision of rural transit with Chris Rural Transit Services. Um, you know, you previously uh, actually made these decisions uh, several months ago. And let me just start with the budget amendments because they're fairly simple. Um, the county will be receiving both state and federal funds um, and then passing those monies through to support rural transit through Chris. So these budget amendments are just to recognize the receipt uh, of those particular funds. And, you know, we always have to have two budget amendments because one's for odd years, one's for even years. Uh, right now, we expect that to be about $588,000 a year between the state and federal dollars. Obviously, that could go up or down depending on state and federal budget decisions. Um, the first three items on here, you previously passed an ordinance, uh, intergovernmental agreement um, regarding the rural transit. At the time that was passed, it wasn't clear, at least to us, um, that RPC would actually be administering um, this on behalf of the county. So these are really just updates uh, of some previous documents that you passed. 
uh, adding RPC to the mix, designating us to administer these funds and work with Chris on behalf of the county, and clarifying some roles and responsibilities in terms of the administration of these dollars between us and Chris. Um, you know, with that, I mean, I could certainly go into more detail if anybody has any questions. Um, be happy to answer them. Questions for Cam? Or a motion? Oh, sorry, go ahead, Carol. I guess this is my question that was pertaining to the Kuwats. I've, I've been, I've received many questions about rural transportation. I don't understand where that transportation actually is. And so with these funds, what is the purpose of them? Well, I, I know that we have some rural transit uh, up and running currently between Rantoul and Champaign. Um, uh, Amy from Chris is here tonight. It might be better to direct that question uh, to her, and maybe she can talk about what the current routes are and what the planned uh, rural transit routes are. Uh, Amy, if you don't mind. Uh, from the mic, please. Thank you. And please uh, tell us who you are. Good evening, I'm Amy Marchand. I'm the CEO of Chris Rural Mass Transit. And the, there was an advisory form, an advisory group formed. It took two years to design the service. It accumulated people from all over the Champaign County area, from social services to um, constituents, just a, a, a significant mix of people to study the population, to do surveys. We conducted nearly 900 surveys in the community to determine that the poverty in the northern county area, specifically in the Ludlow area, Rantoul area, and Thomasboro would be the primary target for transportation and to be especially specific, the area is the Rantoul High School Township area because we had to create a boundary. And so that's the specific boundary that we're focused on. It's intended that that boundary will grow, but you have to start somewhere. And so that's the focus. Go ahead, please, Carol. Do you provide actual public transportation? Uh, my understanding is that people have to still pay uh, a lot more than we would pay. Uh, the, the fare for transit is $5 each way, and that is designed by the advisory committee and actually um, was discussed in detail at the last advisory committee, and it was determined to continue with that level of funding at this time, and um, Stan might be able to speak more to that, but that's specifically where we are at this point for fares. We, we try to keep Stan from speaking to too much here. I'm sorry. Uh, if you don't mind, Carol, okay. any, what else? Just anything one, else? Just one more. All right. You indulge me. Finish it up. Just the last one is then the revenue that is here being appropriated is to do what? Is to specifically pay for the operating cost for to, provi to provide rural transit in that area. So the cost is for the, um, we have funding for equipment. We're actually borrowing vehicles from Vermilion County to provide the service. So the equipment is currently being used at that point and the rest of it is for the actual day-to-day -day operating expenses. Uh, needless to say, fuel is very significant. All of the insurances, coverages, liability, drivers, those sort of things. Uh, James first, then Alan, then Stan. Well, to follow up a little bit, I know that the word is getting out. We've been talking about it. It's been slow moving when you're dealing with a rural area, it, it, not in such a concentrated area. Plus, we decided on the fee based on that if you took a cab, what it would cost. And we know some of these folks need every dollar they can get, but we also don't want, him, want anybody to abuse the service because they are coming from Rantoul all the way to Champaign or Bannon dropping folks off and there's elderly using it. The buses have been on the road. I tried to get them to buy the $500 van, but they just didn't see a need for it. Anything else? I'm gonna, cha I'm gonna change James's name to, to Quiz just to make clear. So <laughs> Quiz, go. you're next. You know James? Yeah, my, my question would be, I, I would assume that the reason why we're funding it is because fares cannot sustain this. So what percentage of your operations <coughs> do fares pay for? Fares at this time, if I recall correctly, are approximately 2% of the budget. It's, very, it's a very small piece of the budget. So why, while $5 for a trip may seem like a lot, it's not really paying for the cost of the service to be there? No, uh, to provide public transportation is an extremely expensive process. Ellen? Refresh me. I know the last time we went through this, you made a uh, kind of a 
overall uh, broad brushstroke of what we're doing in Danville to Champaign. How many trips a day does, uh, is there a trip back and forth there, Danville? You mean between Danville and Vermilion yeah, many, in Champaign County? How many um, trips do you offer? Well, we don't specifically do the trips between Champaign and Danville. Danville Mass Transit does. Chris originally did design that route and established it, started with seven rides a week and ended the year with 13,000 rides a week. Wow. So that's the, um, I mean, I'm sorry, 13,000 rides a year. That's the number. But how many times a day does, does the, the bus go back and forth? It goes back and forth seven times a day now, seven. if you're talking about between Danville and Champaign. Yeah, I'd like to see the same thing happen in Rantoul because that, I think yeah. it's a bedroom community. And probably you'd have greater ridership. Uh, I know 60% of our residents uh, work in Champaign. Yeah, it, it's a it's a very s slow moving process. It starts slow and it builds. So that's a that's about a seven year time span between the Danville and Champaign route. So we can expect to see progress every year, but it will be slow because you have to teach rural people to ride the bus. It's not in their mentality. It's very different. The idea of getting on a bus is you know you you pull up and they need to let the dog out still. That's the kind of mentality sometimes when in rural transit. Thank you, mm -hmm. Diane. I just, I, for some reason, I had something in the back of my mind that um, there was some difficulty with um, meeting budgets and those type of things. I don't know if it's been a little bit or something. I thought I heard something about that. And that's why this is your grant money. This is for one year, and you have to apply every year. Is that kind of what it is? And if it doesn't come, then... We renew. We're off the map again? No, well, we renew. We've been doing it for a quarter of a century in Vermillion County, and it, it renews. Steve-O. Thanks, Brenda. I just needed a brief review of the figures. The rider fee covers 2% of the cost? Approximately. So that means for 5 bucks, we're spending 250 Is that correct? Does that sound right? into the mic if you could please thank you well i i don't have a calculator but you're probably guessing right it is it is expensive venture to get off the ground and over over the years it does it does in turn cr create a very stable environment for folks that aren't stable because once transportation is available to them they become extremely self-sufficient and that's the goal we might all agree though that five dollars is two percent of 250 bucks so if somebody's making a round trip from here to round two, it's costing us $500 a day. There's usually 10 people on there. They split it. Other questions? <coughs> Patsy. Um, just a clarification on uh, this figure we see for the even in the odd years. That's just per year. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, and I, I would say that we will not draw down that much funding the first several years because we need to match the dollars and the service has to build. We don't only have the equipment to provide. We have four vehicles out right now. And so over the years, as, as vehicles increase, we will continue to grow a stronger base and we'll continue. You'll see us pull down more and more money, but it takes several years to you actually pulling down that much funding. Michael? just wanted to clear something up for myself from your exchange you just had with Mr. O'Connor. Now, when you're saying it's 2% of the cost, you're saying that it's fares are 2% of your annual budget because of the high overhead of starting it up. You're not talking 2% of passenger mile costs. Am I hearing that correctly? Passenger mile cost, I'm not sure what the definition is of that. Fares are, are rarely considered anything that sustains a project uh, like this. But, it, but the goal is to teach people so to pay for the service. So you're not saying that, it's, that the $5 is 2% of the cost uh, of the actual trip. For instance, uh, the, for the federal highway budget, the pass, uh, user fees from gas taxes are 41 cents of the passenger mile on the dollar of the passenger mile cost you're saying two out of a hundred but you're not saying two out of a hundred so you're not saying it's 250 dollars per person to go back and forth per trip right that just that it's two percent of your budget it that's correct but if i but i can see how you came to that that number it's i guess it's what angle you're looking at it from 
overall cost for the entire budget, I, I could see where he came to that $250 figure. Well, no, it's it's 2% is 2%, but I just wanted to make sure we're not losing $245 a no, trip. Sir. No, sir, we're not. Okay. Is there anything else? Thank you for that clarification. Stephanie. Um, you did say that we are borrowing the bus the buses or the transportation from Danville. Um, should this program then become successful, are there plans to potentially purchase uh, a vehicle to provide the transportation and no longer use the used buses or transportation from Danville so that we are basically standalone? Yeah, we, uh, we have on order for vehicles and we hope that it, but it takes about two years to get those vehicles. It, it's typical that a neighboring county would provide this service that's already established, and, and so some protocols are in place, and the protocol that we will be following is that we're really borrowing mileage from Vermillion County vehicles, so that mileage will be returned to Vermillion County in the future. We okay. track all that. Thank you. Um, and what is the cost of those buses? For a brand new bus, the last I heard was fifty-six thousand dollars. I don't know what the retail is. We don't ever we don't ever touch that money. That money is um, deemed for the community and and is maintained in Springfield. All right. Have we taken these buses for enough of a ride? Yeah. Yep. Are we ready to vote? Yep. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Need a motion. Aye. Oh. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. That's a great point. Sorry. <laughs> I move an omnibus motion. Of Thank items you. One Hold on. Five. Tom's got it. Tom. I move an omnibus motion of items one through five. My apologies. Is there a second by quiz? Any other discussion? Carol. Um, I thought when we started this that we would. Um, okay. So let me just clarify something right quick. I'm interested in item number four. I don't think I'm totally clear on item number four and am not prepared to vote yes, although I support the rural transportation and want to see something um, expanded there. It's four and five. So I, I have some concerns about it that I don't believe time is going to allow me to address all of them right now, and I think it would be unfair to the county board. Um, and so I would, if I vote no on the omnibus, it votes no on all of them and makes them all go back to the county board agenda. Is that correct? Yep. All right. Um, Parliamentary procedure, Mr. Betts. I'd like I, to. Ask I'll just you go ahead and suggest let's let's move this. one through three omnibus. I don't do, that. do you find that fr friendly, okay. Tom? I just withdraw my motion. He's and withdrawing his motion. And, and, and have the seconder withdraw. Seconder withdraw. Motion. Quiz does. Now New I'm motion. Move items one through three. One through three omnibus quiz seconds. Discussion on those. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Next up is four and five. It was all going to hit consent anyway. Four and five. Uh, is there a motion to move those together? So moved. Uh, by Stan, seconded by Geraldo. Any discussion on those? All in favor say aye. Uh, Carol. I just wanted to um, have those separated because I think for the purpose of the public and really understanding this money, um, we really, really should understand how the rural service works and the money that's attached to it. And so in that vein, I would be voting no for this. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that the board members were clear on that. Very good. Any other comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries, and none of those will go on consent, and they'll all go to full board. Thank you both very much for being here. Next up, item E, I'm going to suggest dangerously an omnibus again for one and two because they're quite related. Uh, amendment 110024 for 2,599 revenue neutral to provide the county board approved. Fiscal year 2011 non-bargaining employee wage increase to Quartz Technology Coordinator plus the Quartz Automation Fund uh, Amendment 110023 for 154 dollars. The the uh, budget transfer described there. Is there a motion by John for omnibus on those two? Seconded by Lorraine. Discussion. Seeing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Mo Motion carries. Neither of those will appear on consent either. 
And next up is Deb. The general corporate fund uh, projection report is in your packet on pages 72 through 74. Our revenue continues to remain stable and um, that's good news. We look uh, like we will receive about 103% of our uh, budgeted revenue and almost 1.5% of that is the $400,000 non-budgeted lease payment we received this year so in actuality it's more like about 101 percent um, that will be over if these numbers hold true but the sales taxes have continued to be um, positive and that's really good to see after the last two and a half years um, the expenditure similarly looks like it's going to come in right at hundred percent of the budget um, and typically, uh, as we go through the year, it gets tighter, and I would imagine we will spend close to 100% of our expenditure budget this year. Um, and the bottom line is, at the end of the fiscal year, it looks like we should, and I don't know what happened to that summary sheet, but we, we, the summary sheet shows that we should be at right about 11%, um, even with the outstanding nursing home loan. So. That's good news. Questions for Deb on the projections? Okay, change report. The change report hasn't changed. Harrison Harris. Harrison Harris, uh, the general corporate fund year to date has received almost $90,000 from the Harrison Harris collections and overall, uh, all agencies have received about $475,000 from the Harrison Harris collections. Questions? Motion to accept those three in place on file by Al, seconded by Carol. Any questions on those? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, the next item is a request to you, the Finance Committee of the Whole, for a waiver of the hiring freeze. As you heard earlier this evening, Kat Bork has tendered her resignation and will be leaving administrative services on August 12th. Um, Two years ago, we had three administrative secretaries. Today, we have two and operating with only one, especially at the point in time in the year in which we're going into finalizing the uh, next year's budget would be extremely difficult. So I'm asking for the ability to follow the personnel policy and fill this position without adhering to the three-month hiring freeze. So moved. Is there, by, by Stan, there's a motion seconded by Al. Discussion? Diane. Is there a transition period that you have in mind from one going to the other? I mean, were you going to hire somebody in July maybe to transition in or? The personnel policy would allow to hire someone so that they would be on board for a two week transitional period. And if we're able to do that, if it's approved, we may try to do that. Okay. Patsy. Uh, is that transitional period the only additional cost to the county or will there be some salary changes? It's highly likely that um, we would not be hiring a new employee at the current salary of an employee who's been here for seven years. Other questions? Five All in, years. sorry. Five years. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item are the uh, Champaign County financial policies. Um, in the past four years, I think, we, you have always adopted the financial policies with the annual budget process resolution, and it seems redundant to do that every year. So um, they're presented to you now just like the personnel policy or the purchasing policy as a policy that you would adopt and that would stand on the record. We would post it on the website. There are no significant changes to these policies other than they have been grouped by categories. So the first several policies are the operating budget policies, followed by the revenue policies, and then debt management, accounting policies, and then some miscellaneous ones. I would just ask for your approval. Motion to approve. So moved. By Stan, seconded by Stephanie. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Next up, the uh, budget. Um, the next item away. is just 
the uh, announcement that the fiscal year 2011 budget was awarded the Distinguished Budget Presentation Award. We just received this in the last couple weeks. This is for information. In, in talking with Deb, this so this is four years in a row? There are five maybe? There are, there are a handful of counties who we were the first of three. Mm -hmm. uh, a few have figured it out and there are a few others that are getting this award but we've been steadily getting it for several years now and that's a credit to Deb. And so uh, this is very good news again. Um, next up is a distribution of public health levy. Yeah, every year um, in March or April we have to determine what the real split is of the public health levy that the county will collect because the appropriate portion has to be distributed back to the Champaign-Urbana Public Health District and that has an impact on the Board of Health budget. So this just provides you with that overview and information of how it changes with the distribution from what was originally budgeted for the fiscal year. Questions? And off of the addendum. Um, this is a re request uh, as the salary administrator, I bring these to you. This is a request from the county clerk for a uh, position title and job description change from a vacant, he has a vacant secretary position, and when he fills that position, he would like to um, change the title to executive assistant and change the job description. Uh, there will be no change in the classification or the salary range, so it does not have any budgetary impact. The Personnel policy requires that any adjustment to the schedule of authorized positions be approved by you, the county board, which is why I'm bringing this to you. The statutes give the county clerk um, complete discretion over the appointment of his personnel. He only has to adhere by statute to the budgetary constraints that the county board places on those positions. So this request is to um, approve the change of secretary to executive assistant, staying in the same uh, salary classification with appropriate changes to be made to the job description by the county clerk. Is there a motion for approval by John? Is there a second? second. By Aaron. Uh, Marty, I mean, uh, Gordy is here tonight. I thought it was Marty. Is there, are there any questions for him or for Deb Ralph first? Is there any change in the function of the office, or is this merely a cosmetic change? Uh, there will be, uh, or I intend there to be some, some change in the function of the positions, less secretarial type work and more outreach, election judge training, um, those, sites of, those types of things. And so I wanted the title and the job description to better reflect the sorts of activities that we intend to use the position for once it's filled. Michael? My question was just going to be for Gordy, since he was here, if he could t talk why, talk through why he, he wanted this change, but he may have just done that. So, if you have any, any anything else to add about why he wanted to change that, throw the, it out. The the previous job description, I don't think, really was an accurate description for the way the position is being used, at least in recent years, to my knowledge, and it's not uh, an accurate description for the sort of role that I'd like to see the position play in the future. So after discussions with Deb, we wanted to update the job description to make it more relevant and uh, a title change at that time seemed relevant. We've also, the position became vacant April 29th and and while there's no requirement for for my office to follow the hiring freeze, we've, we've followed the hiring freeze for this position and won't fill the position f until it's been vacant for 90 days. Stephanie. Along with the job description change, will the salary change? Salary, um, we're not asking for a salary classification range change. Anything else? Thanks, Gordy. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Is that all, Deb? Thank you very much. Next up, Treasurer Dan. And my monthly reports included in your packet. Of agenda, I'd like to give you a little update on real estate taxes. Uh, we mailed the tax bills out on April 29th, and the first installment was due June the 1st. And as of today, we're at 51.65% collected, which is about, compared to last year, about 10 days ahead of last year, so we're doing well there. We're just about to make the second distribution of uh, 
real estate money, uh, if we start working on it today, it's gonna be about $105 million. Mm -hmm. And you might wonder what's $105 million mean to the county. Well, the county levies uh, are gonna get about 10 million of that. And the general corporate fund's gonna get about $2.9 million for that. So as you know, we did borrow for about a million dollars from general court back in April. This will obviously put us in a position to make it through the end of the year and in good shape and still be able to pay back that million dollars in November. So we're in really good shape. I'd sure be glad to answer any questions. If not, uh, I'd ask that my report be accepted and placed on file, please. Questions for Dan or a motion? Uh, first, Chris. I wanted to say uh, thank you for continuing to get the property tax bills out in a timely fashion. It's something that a uh, few counties seem to be able to do. And I'm glad uh, you, should, you should thank the county clerk, the assessor, and the township assessor. The treasurer has almost zero to do with that. So modest. <laughs> I, I don't want to get beat up at the next tax cycle meeting. <laughs> Motion has been made by Geraldo to uh, accept in place on file, seconded by Al. Any discussion? Any other questions for Dan? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Next is the, uh, the auditor. We've got uh, purchase not following purchasing policy for information. Are there any, any questions? Diane, Tony, if you'd Sorry. like, please. Um, just down at the bottom here, um, to Head Start, AT&T had a huge credit in june and then we had a bill for june through november i don't understand what the bookkeeping part of that is do anything about that deb i haven't seen that this so no. I sorry about that pretty unusual that we would prepay eight thousand dollars on mm -hmm. a phone bill <laughs> yeah um you know i don't know the answer to that but i can look into it and get back to you before the board meeting. That'd be great, because then the next item under that means that we haven't paid the bill since June of 08 to November of 10, the way you have it noted here. You know, that looks more like one big bill for a bunch of service, and given the subtraction and addition, I'm guessing there was some wrangling over the phone bill. Um, that's three just a years? guess, though. But For three years, you think? Possibly, yeah, but I really, I let me check into it and okay. give you a definite answer before the meeting. All right, thanks. Anything else? And then monthly report, anything to report there, Tony, that, was, that wasn't no. in the packet? That's just uh, for uh, placing on file. Any motion to do so, please? By Carol, is there a second? Anybody? Second. Jan? Yeah. Any questions for Tony? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other business for finance? There is no chair's report. The items for consent are A1 through 4, B1, C1, F4, and F8. Thank you very much. Policies next, but I've asked uh, Mr. Quisenberry to take uh, policy because I was out for that particular meeting. All right, good evening. Okay, first thing on policy is our vacant position listing. Any comments or questions on that? Ms. 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 Busey, um, in relationship to the administrative uh, position and the secretary's position that we just talked about, will those two be here and open? How, how does the list actually change? This list is a listing of the positions that were vacant as of June 14th. The secretary position in the county clerk's office is vacant. The administrative assistant position in administrative services will likely never be listed as vacant okay. if we fill it by the time Ms. Bork leaves in August. But the other one will. The other one, one Mr. G Mr. Halton vacant. intends to hold vacant for the 90 day hiring freeze waiver period. Hiring freeze period. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, we don't need a, we don't yeah. need to accept this. Okay, so, well, go, uh, okay um, item number two under section A is an ordinance of County Champaign, Illinois, um, Champaign County, um, Illinois is ascertaining the prevailing wa rate of wages for laborers, mechanics, and other workers employed in public works of said county. Move adoption. Second. Second. 
Mr. Betts moved. Mr. Kurtz seconded. Uh, any discussion or questions? Ms. Busey, would you like to? Well, for Talk those board that. members who are new, this is something that you do every June. It's required. The state uh, posts the prevailing wage rates for Champaign County in the 1st of June, and you adopt the ordinance setting those rates at your June board meeting. All right. Any questions? Ms. Petrie. Uh, an information question. How does the state get this data? What do they use to do this? Well, that's a good question for the state. I don't know the answer to that. Okay, any further questions? I can somewhat answer that. Mr. Betts. It's usually based on the highest paid union laborers in those fields. That tends to be the way it's done. Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign? Aye. Motion passed. Okay, item number three, uh, recommendation of award for contract of mail services as a re result of the RFP 2011-006. And Ms. Busey, could you give us a little background on that? Sure, as you will recall, last month you um, approved the release of this RFP for mail services for the entire county. This is the daily mail processing of all county mail. And uh, there was only one response. It was from the current provider, but the good news is the rate is dropping from 0.05 per piece to 0.04 per piece. And I would ask your approval of the award of this contract. Moved, Moved by Mr. Jay, seconded by Ms. Solderfield. Any discussion or questions? All right, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passed. Okay, we have, uh, in section B, we have reports from the county clerk, uh, monthly fees report, and the uh, semi-annual re fees report. Any questions? Moved by Mr. McGinty, second by Mr. Rosales. Any discussion or questions for the clerk? Mr. Alex. Clerk's still here. We could probably find him in his office, but. All right. All those in favor for putting it on file, say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Okay, under section C, uh, recommendation for award of contract for prime food vendor. Ms. Busey. Mr. Buffenbarger is here from the oh, nursing okay. home and can probably explain this. Hello, this was a RFP for uh, all of the food purchases that we make for residents of the nursing home, as well as some related items, some minor cooking equipment, aluminum foil, saran wrap, and some of the basics that keep our kitchen going. Um, the last contract uh, was in 2007, and so we're anticipating that contract to expire in October of this year. So this RFP is in uh, anticipation of that. Uh, we had uh, we had two respondents. One was a qualified bidder, and it's actually our current provider. Uh, and the rates that they came in with were very good. They were very competitive. And we know that because uh, it's better than what we're getting now. And uh, the second respondent submitted a, uh, a, a bid sheet, a spreadsheet, showing the cost of their food items. And we were able to compare the two, and they were very close. So we're comfortable that uh, the highest bidder and only bidder, Wa Food, or the lowest bidder and the only bidder, Wa Foods, uh, is a, a responsible bidder and we'd like to uh, contract with them. All right. Um, Ms. Richards. <coughs> Andrew, is this just for uh, the delivery of food or are they also doing the, the cooking at the nursing home? Just delivery of the food. Ms. Petrie. You did a nice job of advertising this for a long period of time. So only getting two responses that just because there 
are not that many agencies out there that do this kind of work? That's exactly right. This is a, a commercial distribution. It's, uh, yeah, there are not very many people that do this. I think we need a motion. Move approval. Second. Moved by Mr. Bensel, second by Mr. James. Any further questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Thanks. And uh, you'll find on your table uh, an additional item, because I don't think, I think this will go under our other business. Um, we have a, a uh, proclamation designating the month of July 2011 as Respect and Celebrate Civil Unions Month. Uh, I would ask um, Ms. Ammons, would you like to uh, speak to this? Yes, I can read the resolution. Um, the city of Champaign and Urbana uh, had already passed their resolutions <laughs> for civil unions that was passed at the state level uh, last month. And so this was submitted for us to pass our civil unions um, celebration in support of this. And I'll read the resolution for the committee. It says, whereas a significant number of adult population of the county of Champaign are lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender, and whereas lesbians, gay men, bisexual persons, and transgender people make numerous contributions to the artistic, commercial, educational, political, religious, and social life of Champaign County, and whereas under the Illinois Religious Protections and Civil Union Act, same-sex couples, have been obtaining civil union licenses for the first time in history from the Champaign County Clerk and have be begun using these licenses for civil union ceremonies and whereas these civil unions are the legal equiv equivalent of marriages under Illinois law with all the same state rights and responsibilities and whereas Champaign County Clerk Gordy Holton, his staff, the up center of Champaign County the NBF and M law firm and others celebrated the first 13 same sex couples to receive such licenses with a joyous party in the Lyle Shields meeting room on the morning of June 1st, 2011. And whereas providing state legal recognition to the relationships of same sex couples who are raising children together is in the best interest of their children and Whereas on July 4th, we will celebrate the foundation of that nation which provides the liberty and justice for all which made possible these historic events. Now, therefore, it is proclaimed by the Champaign County Board that the month of July 2011 is designated as Respect and Celebrate Civil Unions Month in the County of Champaign, Illinois. And I so move. All right. We have this a motion by Ms. Ammons and second... Um, by Ms. Anderson, uh, discussion. No discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign? Aye. Motion passes. That would be all from, and you can designate. Uh, yep, uh, I believe that's all for policy. Um, I have that. The um, items on consent would be the, the mail contract, RFP, and the nursing home contract, RFP. And everything else will go to the full board. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> quiz. That's quiz. I'm James. Stanley. Quiz and Barry. That's a new stand. Put the pen out, and that's not staying. <laughs> Good evening, um, County Facilities. Has quite a bit of business tonight that is at least for discussion. Um, so I'm going to try to make sure that everyone gets an opportunity to speak, uh, but that we try not to be too repetitive. Um, first, I'd like to hear from the facilities director regarding the three items he has on uh, the agenda. On pages 122 through 125 are our monthly reports uh, for your information. 
everything looks reasonable with the exception on page um, 122. You'll notice that the courthouse repair and maintenance line item is uh, almost 100% spent. Now, that is because we've had uh, approximately $20,000 worth of expenses uh, un unanticipated for the replacement of, uh, of some variable frequency drives pertaining to the cooling system, which we found this spring. Uh, we will adjust the rest of our line items appropriately to try to make it through the rest of the year, but that was uh, why that number is so, uh, so poor. I entertain a motion to receive and place on file. So moved. Moved by Mr. Rosales, seconded by Ms. Michaels. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the same. Wait a minute, Tom, Patsy had a hand up. Patsy? Um, and were those drives not warrantied or anything like that, or, or were they warrantied and that was just a partial cost to the county? Uh, they were no longer warrantied. Uh, standard equipment when the building was built was one year warranty on those, and uh, so we've been way past that period. Okay, so the county doesn't tend to buy ever any extended warranties, or? We do buy extended warranties from time to time, but even then, extended warranties are for three to five years and not for the for a ten year period. Those opposed, the same. Motion carries. The Brookings Energy Lighting Retrofit. Uh, we did receive official notification from the um, state, state of Illinois that they are uh, year three EEP program. The energy efficiency program for our lighting. If you remember, we, we were approved two, one from the, for the energy efficiency program, uh, and then another community block grant administered through the Regional Com Planning Commission. So this is the first grant. We did uh, receive official notification. We have not received a dime yet, but we expect to have some, uh, some uh, dollars coming in here pretty soon. <laughs> We um, are still working on uh, the following uh, community block grant administered through RPC as we are finalizing all our lighting upgrades for this building working in pod 400 now. Okay. Any questions? <coughs> oh, my, my favorite, the finial update. Um, <clears throat> There, <clears throat> excuse me. There has been <clears throat> virtually no movement in the last 30 days from um, any of our vendors, the roofing company or the uh, finial manufacturer itself. So, um, as of uh, on 6 10th uh, of this month, of course, on the 10th of this month, I received a copy of new email notice from uh, our insurance representative that they have. Uh, sent off letters of subrogation to the advanced roofing company and Coppercraft manufacturer, and I am now currently and actively looking for another copper finial manufacturer to see if we can have another one uh, built for its replacement. If, if we have one built for its replacement, how is that going to affect the payment um, with, with regard to? Well, I don't know at this point in time. I'm just uh, trying to get a, a good solid footing now with our insurance representative. Typically on any other project as it was uh, over a year ago, if you remember the truck that burned up in the highway building, we lost a truck and we spent months cleaning and repainting and uh, all billings and reimbursements at that time went directly to the insurance company. It did not cost us anything other than our deductible, if I remember correctly. So I'm assuming that this will be what we are going to attempt to do again. Questions from members of the board? Mr. J. What, what would our deductible be on this, do you know? $5,000. With an estimated cost to repair this? Uh, well, the original estimated cost, based on the original construction price, was approximately twenty thousand dollars. Okay. Other questions from members? At some point is there the potential for us to get our deductible back if we um, 
do what you're, you're suggesting? I believe so, yes. Okay. Other uh, Mr. Wett Langenheim. I would just like to go on record as saying that it really is incumbent upon us to repair that and put that place, that part of the soul of the county, so to speak. We still don't know exactly what caused it. Um, there are absolutely no signs of lightning damage to the finial itself, so it, uh, we know it broke in half. We assume it was caused by wind shear, but the exact cause of why it broke where it did has not yet been officially determined at this time. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. So if I follow this conversation correctly, the people that we bought that from are not going to be able to replace it and therefore you have to find somebody else to replace it and then we pay the insurance deductible? There wasn't a guarantee after a certain length of time? Well, yes, you are correct. It was this, a roofing manufacturer, a roofing in installer, advanced roofing and, she and sheet metal, installed the finial. They purchased it from a distributor mm -hmm. who had it manufactured by another company uh, the roofing company has been really actively trying to work with us, trying to get them to repair it. But uh, we're, they're not getting anywhere, and we're not getting anywhere. So we think that right now it's our best interest to um, start looking at our insurance company so we don't sit around and wait the entire summer to get this back up on the roof. No further questions? Okay, if you can update us on the Art Bartel construction project. Well, I'm happy to say that today we finished moving in, every, well, all of the county clerk. Of course, last month I told you that the, the coroner was already in his space. Um, we have also moved the uh, uh, physical plant, so far just the break room and the personnel. Um, so we are occupying the building, all systems are up and running. There are very, very minor, minor items to be completed on the, on the punch list, and sometimes it just takes a while, but it's still moving on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, everyone's, although there's going to be a lot of work yet for the physical plant, we still have to, we've got a month or so or more of moving and sorting all the stuff that's left in the Guild building and bring it, carrying it into the new building. Uh, the clerk's stuff is in its spot, but I'm sure they have months of sorting and reorganizing reorganize, and trying to get things uh, where it's in usable shape. Um, we, will have, we will have information for you for the final change order with our, um, with our deduct for stormwater management. The official documentation, it looks like the project is going to be completed uh, at approximately $8,000 below uh, budget. Questions? Monthly project budget report. Deb, would you? The monthly budget report for the project is in your packet and um, clearly we're moving forward on budget and after we enter this last change order it will actually be adjusted down by 8,000 as Alan just indicated. I had a, a, a member of the board ask me about the situation with the drainage um, with Burns Clancy where we stand on, on um, where that's going at this point. Burns Clancy has, I believe, finished all of the field survey updates they needed to do. They have spent several hours in my office going over our uh, documents from the um, construction of the Highway Fleet Maintenance Building, uh, the little remodel projects at Ileas, and of course our new construction for 202 to update their, their final uh, draft so they have all everything together. They are now trying to compile this information and hopefully they will be ready to uh, s the 1st of August to be uh, make a presentation of uh, what their recommendations or your options are for this project. Any questions? Thank you. 
Um, amendment to the uh, outgoing loan agreement with Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library and Museum. I'd entertain a motion. Moved by Mr. Nudo, second by Ms. Anderson. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Richards. Is this just extending the loan until August 1st? That's it. Uh, is there going to be any increase in the cost of our insurance on that uh, with the extension? I didn't think so. I don't think so. I do not believe so, no. No. Okay. Mr. Nudo. Uh, our old friend Barb Wysocki, I went to that meeting and uh, the reason why it was extended is because uh, Lincoln, of all places, Illinois, canceled on the movement of the project over to their courthouse <laughs> and uh, we voted to uh, extend it to ours and I, I, there's no change in the insurance. Any other questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the same. Motion carries. Okay. Item D, there's a series of, of reports that you have. I think everyone either have received them by email or paper copy at this point. Um, this is an issue that we've intimated was coming months and months ago. Um, it's, it's, I would say we're at the semi-beginning stages uh, now of, of trying to address some of the problems that we have um, with regard to our jail facilities. Um, Item, item one was the National Institute of Corrections report on downtown correction facility. Our facilities director has a, 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 a white paper. The sheriff has a, a report as, as well. Um, I will take them in any order that, that folks, if the sheriff would like to ad address the, I would like that presentation first. If, if, if it's agreeable with the committee, the sheriff's been sitting here quite a while. Um, I, I, we've got a couple people here. Uh, I think the first thing I'd like to do is, since this, this is Lieutenant Cravens, uh, he's the administrative lieutenant of the jail. Uh, first off, uh, Superintendent Moore could not be here. Uh, he sends his regrets. Unfortunately, his mom passed away out of state, um, so uh, he cannot be here tonight. Uh, I, I want to talk a little bit about some of the stuff. Uh, I'll, let me defer that. I'll let the lieutenant, if it's okay with him, and once he gets ready, go through what, what is a seven-minute presentation, because I'm going to talk about, and many of you know, there's a huge difference between the satellite jail and the downtown jail. And for those of you that haven't seen it, hopefully this will show it. Uh, then we also have Nancy Griffin, but I'll come back up in between, and uh, when we're all done, we'll try to answer whatever questions you guys have. Lieutenant? Okay, this should give you just an overview of both facilities, um, the housing areas, and, and the condition of <coughs> both. Our master control area where the uh, cameras and the uh, control buttons that control all of our door systems. It's the A pod officer station. That's where the officers sit and conduct most of their work. That's the view of the housing areas from the officer. As you see, they have a wide view of pretty much everything that's happening in their area. Outdoor recreation, they can play basketball, walk, um, just get some fresh air out there. Be a typical housing unit at the jail. Really the only different ones we would have would be uh, handicap cells. booking area which is uh, also houses a lot of our medical and mental health people um, takes up the majority of our space up there uh, mental health and uh, medical individuals are housed throughout both jails not um, consolidated in any one area which makes it difficult to manage
that's the master control area there. Um, re last update was about 10 years ago to it. East side, you'll see a lot, a big difference compared to the satellite jail. That's the officer has housing areas um, on both sides of that wall that they have to observe, plus uh, two housing areas here where uh, mental health and uh, medical individuals might be housed. That's pretty much the general view they have in, inside of the cell block, a lot different from the satellite. You see they can see maybe 50% and when it's filled with inmates, you know, you're obstructed even more. It's pretty much the door at night when they do their cell checks. That's the typical window they have to look into um, to check on the inmates at night. That's a lot different from the satellite also. That's about the most natural light they get from the outside while they're in their rooms. That's the conditions of the ventilation. In the uh, up top, you'll see that's the day room where they stay during the day. That's the most sunlight they get. This area here separates the main part of the jail from the dorm. Uh, they're completely isolated from the rest of the jail. It makes that very difficult to manage. Old booking, which also uh, houses some of our individuals with medical and mental health needs. At the downtown jail, you need a, another officer to help maintain the uh, recreation where at the satellite, that officer can uh, watch the inmates that are in the housing areas plus uh, watch the inmates that are in visit uh, recreation, which uh, helps out on manpower. These are videos basically when one of our officers would have to take uh, conduct a cell check this is pretty much the uh, routine they have to go through at the downtown jail. As you can see, while they're checking on one area, they have no idea what's going on in the other. Viewing areas are very small. These two blocks right here are now special management housing areas some of them are medical or mental health individuals In this cell, as in with a lot of them, there are a lot of uh, spaces that you cannot see. Um, typically, you'll have to open up the door to get a good view of what's going on in the room if the inmate's not in plain sight. It, these areas here require a lot of maintenance. Uh, we have an individual down at, the, at that facility that uh, has to work on the locks, doors, lights, uh, constantly. Like, it's, like I said, if he's at this window, he's, he's got five other windows that he has no idea what's going on. And even when he steps back into uh, the open space, 
his view is even smaller at that point. Uh, <coughs> with the glass and the uh, cinder block, it's, it can be difficult to hear what's going on in the areas also. This is a satellite jail. This uh, officer is at the satellite desk and from that position he can see almost everything in the cell block. There's the outdoor recreation area that he can monitor um, without the requirement of additional staff. And that's it. Um, the officer you just saw walking through there, we are required under Illinois jail standards to do cell checks at least every half hour. Many of our prisoners, because of special needs, it's, it's every 15 minutes. Uh, I'm going to talk about some of the stuff. We have given you the NIC report. We asked them to come in. Uh, Alan has done an excellent job of outlining some of the issues with the building. Uh, I'm assuming you're going to read the report I've given you. Uh, NIC, there's a lot of stuff in there I don't frankly agree with. I don't think it's right. I think some of the stuff perhaps got unloaded, let's say, from somebody else's report because they even refer to, for example, county commissioners. We don't have commissioners. But most of it really doesn't matter. Um, I'll give you one other example. They talk about policies and they talk about uh, ACA accreditation, well, we have policies. Uh, we are working on ACA accreditation. I mean, these are good things. It, I'm not going to take issue with little stuff. However, um, they do talk about programs at the downtown jail, and I have asked Nancy Griffin to come and just spend a couple minutes and talk to you about that because, again, some of the stuff is in there. Whatever's in there really has nothing to do with the facility and what I think we ought to do, but I just want to let you know because I'm sure many of you are interested in some of the issues raised by the NIC report. So, Nancy, if you want to explain who you are, what you do, and talk to them just briefly about the programs. Hi, I'm Nancy Griffin, and I'm the program coordinator of the satellite and the downtown jail. Uh, the NIC as the sheriff mentioned, there were some uh, what seems to be inaccuracies about the programs provided for the women at the downtown jail. Um, we do have programs. Pro actually, I'd like to say that program development is, some, is a continual process. Uh, there are programs that come in, um, and then for whatever reason, uh, they leave. Uh, we have U of I students, we have Parkland students, we have uh, people from the community that come in and pro provide programs. Um, some of our mainstay programs are uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. It's, a, it's obviously important. Many people have drug or alcohol problems. Uh, Narcotics Anonymous. Uh, these are programs that uh, uh, are provided on a weekly basis. Uh, not only does the Alcoholics Anonymous uh, uh, program at the jails provide the actual volunteers and provide uh, the actual meetings, uh, step meetings or individual meetings, but they actually provide the AA Big Books and the 12 Steps and 12 Traditions. So the literature is also available to the inmate population, male and female. Uh, Narcotics Anonymous is another active group in, in both jails, Satellite and Downtown. Um, they do donate uh, the, the NA Big Books. Um, those tend to be a little more limited uh, because they don't have pocket editions like the AA uh, program has. Uh, we have GED at, at the Satellite Jail. Uh, we do not have that downtown at the women's jail or where the women are housed. Um, we are working with Parkland College Project READ uh, so that we can have more individualized uh, educational programs for the women that don't require the kind of numbers that actual classroom requires. Uh, GED, uh, having a satellite classroom requires funding. Funding requires an adequate amount of students 
to to have that uh, so that we're able to have GED so we are working on different types of educational programs for the women uh, churches is in another important aspect for uh, the inmate population we have uh, church groups we have Bible study uh, Jesus is a way is our primary provider for church and Bible study uh, they provide the the church and Bible study for the women at, at the downtown jail and another long time uh, uh, provider of church is Barb Gillespie she has been there at the jail for many years uh, bringing in a church program for the women as well um, programs are important it provides the inmate population with the opportunity for continuity in when they do get out of jail as we know most of our offenders are going to go back to the community so we're hope you know for us the goal is is that when they get out of jail they are able to continue with an educational program uh, support groups uh, spiritual counseling so that they're able to avoid returning to jail um, because that, that's the important goal is that they don't come back any questions mm -hmm. do you offer any ESL programs for uh, non-english speaking inmates um, we we do have interpreter programs we've got interpreters we've actually have some officers that are uh, that are bilingual and help us with with needs of of the the inmate population but I would imagine that a lot of these inmates would not be able to take advantage of many of these programs that you uh, have indicated because a lot of them don't know the language so you, you're saying that there's an officer that would sit there an hour or two and teach them GED classes in English or Spanish um, actually we have a lot of uh, uh, Spanish speaking inmates that do attend GED <coughs> and they are the ones that do request the reading tutoring and reading and writing and that's actually supplemented by our GED teacher um, we use the resources that we have if we have uh, uh, bilingual inmates in the jail we ask them to help us with people that need assistance for translation so actually do we miss some people for programs i would say that's always a possibility um, if we find a need i go to find what i can do to fill that need Yeah, Dan, you said there were a number of inaccuracies in the report. Uh, did you inform um, them about these inaccuracies and, and add these programs to it so that the perception isn't that we had none of these programs on, um, in the jail? I, I did not, Al. Um, we got the report, and they did not send it to us saying, what do you think of this? Are there any corrections? They said, simply said, here's your report. Thank you very much. Uh, again, a lot of these things... Yeah, I take personal offense, like when you say we have no programs, or it implies we don't care. That's not true. Uh, but my personal offense doesn't really matter. What, what, I think, what I think is important here is we've got to look at the facility uh, because it is creating problems. Well, I, I understand from a personal point of view, but this is a public report. And it's going to be in the newspapers. It's going to be uh, discussed in the county. Um, I think we, we need to make sure that corrections that, that there's no misinterpretation of this report and that corrections should be made um, especially when it when it's really in your favor uh, and in the perception of what the um, what what the sheriff's department is doing with these inmates so um, I would think that corrections should be uh, certainly advertised uh, to the public well perhaps the way to do it, that's why I asked Nancy to come in here because she can address it very personally she does this stuff uh, maybe maybe what we'll do Al is send them a letter and, and copy you guys and the news media dealing with some of the things um, I, well I guess I'll get into it in just a bit but okay. 
Stephanie. Yeah, and actually, I have requested to be able to address the auditors that came to the jail because I think there are some inaccuracies, and I was one of the people interviewed and specified the programs that we have, what's available, and uh, you know that program development is always in the horizon for us as well. Stephanie Holdfield. Um, can just for clarification purposes that would be on page seven the observation and recommendation so that you are referencing line item C specifically I'm sorry what you're specifically addressing 1C in the observations and recommendations which I believe is supposed to be page seven yes okay. mm -hmm. actually I've got that mark yes okay all right thank you other questions for her Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Nancy, thank you. Uh, okay. I guess now let's get down to it. Um, first off, why am I here now? Uh, I'm here now for, for basically two simple reasons. Number one, Ms. Busey's told me that, that at this point you folks are interested in, in talking about the downtown jail, the facility itself, and, and more importantly, Ms. Busey informs me that in the foreseeable horizon for a change, there may be some money available for bond issues so that we can do something about it. Um, I'm not going to, there's nothing in these reports I don't think that we haven't talked about before. I believe it was about a, about a year ago when we had to make some major repairs at the jail. And I, I, think, the, I, I think what I used as an example then is basically we're, we're fixing a flat tire on an old car when we took care of the cooler. That's why we're here today. I'm assuming all you folks are going to take a look at the various reports we've given you. Um, I want to just talk in, in very general. I'm not going to go through it all because I know you all can read. Uh, let me hit a couple of high points. First off, downtown. What was it designed to do? It was designed to hold 134 prisoners. The satellite, it was designed to hold 147 prisoners. Years ago, for those of you that have been on board a long time, we had a huge spike in our prisoner numbers. And Alan and his folks came in and welded in another 30 beds because we were literally normally bedding uh, over 300 prisoners. What have we done since then? And again, this goes to that report to some extent, Al. If you remember, I guess Roger's left, we, we had a big, a, a lot of meetings with the judges, the state's attorney who's here tonight, the public defender, Ms. Busey was part of it. Basically, we called it jail overcrowding. Uh, and for years, we worked on that. They mentioned in the report, for example, use OR or ROR, release on own recognizance. We do that. I, I can't criticize these judges. They, they really work at moving cases. Did they do that when I first took office, 2002? The answer is no. They didn't care. But when our numbers got way up, um, presiding Judge Stefanis got real involved in this stuff. So we're doing a lot of that stuff that other counties aren't doing. Um, I could talk for hours. I'm going to try not to. Um, first off, when I talk about bedded prisoners, what I mean, so we're all on the same page, is a prisoner who has already been to arraignment court, his or her bond has been set by a judge, and they can't bond out, or they won't bond out. When, for those of you that aren't familiar, when an officer makes an arrest in this county, they, 99 out of 100 times, will come to the Champaign County Jail. They'll go in that little room where you saw the officer sitting at the desk and the prisoner sitting opposite him. They'll do a quick medical intake. They'll, they'll, they'll do a search of the person for contraband and weapons. Then they'll go into that booking area that you saw. That's those two long hallways. Um, we, will, we will book them in. We will fingerprint them. We'll take their mug photos, all this kind of stuff. We'll give them great opportunities to try to come up with bond if, there is, if it's a bondable case. Misdemeanors in general, it's $100. Felonies in general, you can't bond out. The court has to see you and set the bond. So when I talk about bedded prisoners, I'm not referring to the new intakes. Now, as of this morning, we take, we take head counts periodically, but I always use the 6 to 7 a.m. head count as the official one. Uh, as of this morning, we had 18 prisoners in the bookend. That means 18 brand new prisoners. We had a total of 239 bedded down prisoners. In other words, they're, they've been switched out into our clothing and they're gonna stay with us for a while. That's both facilities. There were about 50 inmates downtown, and of those 50, 23 were female. 
today, this morning, again at, at eight o'clock or uh, seven o'clock or so, we had 18 inmates on electronic home detention. Now, I'm assuming some of you folks have read about that or heard me talk about it. When we got our numbers way up in the 300s, we tried to find ways to reduce it. The statute allows the sheriff to put people on electronic home detention. And so we started using that. What it is nowadays is a real-time GPS monitor. The officers pre-screen them. It's nonviolent, normally traffic offenders, and the road deputies have become probation officers. They'll literally, we check them virtually every week, if not more often, and they'll, the road deputy will actually go to the house of somebody who's on electronic home detention unannounced, knock on the door, hey, I'm here to see you, and today we're going to search your whole house. Today we're going to search your kitchen. I want to see if you got guns, drugs, or alcohol. Uh, things like that, so we try to monitor. We've had and we've run as many as 50 prisoners on this electronic home detention. Unfortunately, the law is changing, and perhaps Ms. Reitz may want to talk about her ideas on this, but there's an appellate case now, Illinois appellate case, saying the sheriff cannot use this electronic home detention for mandatory minimum sentences. Uh, I mentioned it in my, in my report to you folks. A lot of our offenders are here in traffic. More and more reasons the, state, the Secretary of State finds and the legislature agrees why we're going to suspend people's driver's license. They have to get to work. They have to get to whatever. They drive while suspended. They're in our jail. So we've gone now from 50 people uh, on electronic home detention, give or take. And now we're down normally in the lower 20s. Today it just happened to be 18. So what, what, what am I even talking about this? Because if this case law holds, this is the type of thing that keeps growing. People keep driving while suspended. The sentences get longer and longer to jail. So we're going to have more and more inmates. The other thing that I've talked to you folks about, and I've talked about in public, uh, is the medical and mental health issues. Our inmates are sicker, both medically and in terms of mental health, than they ever have been. They're, they're much worse. Why does that matter? It matters, number one, because we have an obligation to provide them with their medical care. We do provide them with their mental health care. And the other thing is simply housing. Where are we going to put these people? Um, I, uh, we drafted this report, I think it was June 7th. It's in there. And on that day, we had 24 inmates that had to have specialized individual housing. Uh, if I remember right, it's in there. Seven of them were in green gowns. That means we had them in a Velcro suit. We've taken away all their clothing, all their property, because for whatever they said to us or whatever we knew about them, we were concerned that they could be actively suicidal. They had to be kept separate. We had another, I think it's another seven, uh, that had severe medical problems, including a couple, and we still got them today, that have to have oxygen generators. Well, I can't have electrical outlets in a normal cell block because what's an inmate to do? They have nothing to do but play around. They're going to stick something in that electrical outlet, so I can't have that. So I have to house those people separate. Most of them are on 15-minute checks. And the other, then, the other big area that came up for this 24 is just simply inmates with severe mental health problems that cannot be housed with others. Um, the example I typically give is the guy who gets in his cell, gets his food, throws it all around. Frankly, there are guys that throw a lot worse things than food, and they just can't be housed with other people, and I think we've talked about that before. The other thing that I don't know that the public realizes, but I think most of you guys do, just because, let's keep the numbers simple, I have 100 beds and let's say I have, and let's say all my prisoners are male. We don't even have the sec separation issues, but I have 100 beds and I have 90 prisoners. Well, Sheriff, you must have space. You've got 10 extra. You know, I don't know. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. If, let's say they're all healthy. They're all mentally fit. The other issues in terms of what we have to deal with as separation is, can these healthy people be housed together? For example, the four of you gentlemen our co-defendants in a homicide case. We don't want to put you together because you may get your stories straightened up that way. Or worse, the four of you are co-defendants in a homicide case. They killed some relative of you two and you just happen to be in my jail. 
can I put any of you guys together? The answer is no. Does that happen? Yes, that happens very regularly. So we have all these separation problems, plus the mental health, plus the medical. We just don't have the space. I said it in there, we, we basically could run a hospital, uh, but that's not what I'm asking for. Um, we don't have the money for that. Um, where, where do I think we're at now? I think we're at a point now that there perhaps is going to be some money available in a few years, and this is a long process. You don't go out and build a jail tomorrow, even if you guys said, here's the open checkbook, Dan, build whatever you want. It takes time to plan. When you think about this, most sheriffs never build a jail. And the ones that do perhaps build one jail or have one significant addition, this is the kind of thing we've got to study on. We've got to bring in some, I hate to use the word, experts or consultants, people who have done this before, because we sure don't want to mess it up. It's too expensive to do it wrong. Um, so I think what you guys need to do is look at this, think about it, talk about it, and then quite frankly, give me some direction. I mean, if the consensus of this group is deal with the sheriff, there's no money, we don't want to, we're not going to do anything, okay, that's, you know, you guys run the checkbook, I don't. On the other hand, if you say, hey, yes, we think there's something we, we need to look at, uh, right now myself, Ms. Busey, Mr. Betts? Mr. Betts and our jail superintendent are scheduled to go to a week-long school put on by the National Institute of Corrections on how to build jails and how to design this stuff in August. Well, you know, if, if we're going to pursue this, we're going to go to this school and learn. On the other hand, if you don't want to do this, I got stuff better to do with my week. And I don't mean that bad. Um, I'm not an expert in building. This could fall in more into Alan's bailiwick than mine or, or into Denny Inman's when he was here. I think if you guys say, yeah, we, we are serious, we want to look at what our options are, I think there's two things we need to consider. I, again, I hate to use the word expert or consultants. There are experts and consultants that will give us projections about future jail needs in terms of population. Now, quite frankly, I think they'll give you five and ten-year projections. The ten-year projections, my personal opinion, we might as well flip a coin. I have no idea what the legislature is going to do, how many more things they will criminalize between now and ten years from now. So that's one issue. But the second issue, and, you know, you think about it when you remodel your home, um, do we remodel the downtown jail? I'm not an engineer. My personal opinion is, I don't think you can do it. I think you basically would have to tear it down, and then we have to figure out when we rebuild it or remodel it, what do I do with today the 50 inmates that are in there? I have to put them someplace. Um, this is not like remodeling uh, the three rooms at the back of your house. This stuff downstairs is all concrete and steel. It's not like we can knock down drywall and move, move uh, Two by four stud walls, so it's a it's a major project. So what I need from you folks is some guidance, and quite frankly, and Alan, you can address the engineering cost. If you say yeah, let's pursue it, I think just to look at it is going to cost money. Like to get these experts to give us uh, projections about inmate populations in the future, I believe it's around twenty thousand um, dollars. And again, they can give us the best projection. I don't know what the future is going to hold. Um, the other thing I want to talk about, Alan, this sort of goes back to the NIC and their report, which in some ways I think slams us unfairly. Uh, we, we, are year, we are inspected by the Illinois Department of Corrections because we are under Illinois jail standards. Uh, our last two uh, inspections, I actually, they're 50 some pages, uh, I guess Deb and I had some miscommunications. The bottom line is the last two years, we have no non-compliance, in other words, we are totally compliant except the dorm area of the downtown jail. It, it doesn't meet the right airflow standards, and uh, that it's an exception because it was built before 19, uh, 1988. Some of you may look at that and say, well, why are those vents covered? Well, or why are those windows covered? It's real easy. When that place was designed, the vents are low enough. I, as an inmate with nothing to do all day long, can reach that vent and start sticking stuff in it, or poking it, or pulling it, or tearing it apart to use it as a weapon. It was just, I have no idea who designed it. I just think it could have been better designed. But those are some of the issues. Uh, the other one I want to just mention, because I think it's kind of funny, and I hope I don't upset anybody. Um, I took this picture months ago. These are some of our regular pets. And this is upstairs. 
I mean, this is my office. This is the bathroom myself and the girls use. This is so common. I showed it to uh, one of our union stewards. I said, if I tell the board this does not upset you because it's so common, would that be true? And her answer was yes. We're used to this. It's an old building. We had a young lady who graduated from high school just a few weeks ago in our office today. She was doing some volunteer work. Guess what ran across the carpet right in front of her, 20 feet from my office door? One of our little friends. Now, she freaked out, screamed, and said, I'm done, I'm out of here. And my secretary, Teresa, went up and snapped on it, threw it away, and didn't even think about it. Um, the other thing, and just while I'm on this, because I again think this is humorous and you might find it of interest, uh, this past summer we actually had a birth in the jail. Now you may say to the sheriff that's not uncommon, you know, prisoners get pregnant, that kind of stuff happens. Well, in this case it was a, I don't know what you call it, a litter of baby gardener snakes uh, because we found baby snakes upstairs and downstairs. I mean that's just the nature of this old building. There's apparently a lot of holes and sore entrances and things like that. So I guess what I'm saying folks, take a look at this stuff. You guys need to talk about it and then if you want us to pursue it, we are going to spend some money and I guess we'll have to get that somewhere to, to look at some of the engineering stuff. And, uh, other than answering your questions, that's where we're at. I've been around long enough that I remember when that building was built. I wasn't on this board, but I went to a lot of board meetings for an organization that monitored things. And as I recall, the old, old jail was condemned more or less by the state. And they had a lot of discussion about the size of that lot, that building's on, and it was jammed in there to where you can't do anything else with it. And the thing was over capacity the day it opened. That's exactly right. And I remember sitting in here and discussing boarding of prisoners like we discuss agency nursing with a nursing home now. and. Coles County and Douglas County and DeWitt County and to a lesser extent Ford pretty much built a jail on what we spent an out of county boarding and we had deputies on the road to Charleston and Tuscola and Paxton and Clinton bringing these guys home to go to court and taking them back. That, that, that is quite true. And the struggle they had with that building was just like the struggle we had with that courthouse before we got the quarter cent passed. There was no money to, to build it. Every corner was cut to get it done. And it, it wasn't, I don't remember, but two years after it was built, we started double bunking people in there and steel beds because we didn't want to take them somewhere else and I made a lot of trips to Paxton and to Tuscola to talk to Sheriff about how many can you take, when can you take them, and how many can we leave here and how many are we going to have in transit. And that building had every corner cut in it you could cut to get it built. And now you're looking at it 35 years later and it's, it's just like that old Champaign County Bank building. They ran out of money, so you cut corners, and 20 years later it comes back to haunt you. Yeah, and, and I don't know if, if you're ever in danger of going out of county with any of these people. It, it's just a horrible process to tie up deputies and vehicles and money that we could have kept here before we got this one built. We, we do board out of county occasionally, and now the reason we do it is, is separation issues. I, I, I literally run out of space where I can keep the four of you and, and you two separate, or you've, I've got some with special medical needs where, again, I ran out of, problem, of space. And I will say the other time I have boarded out, just so I'm completely left front with everybody, um, 
We'll pick on Lieutenant Cravens. Lieutenant Cravens' uh, brother gets arrested and sentenced to jail. We will not keep that close of a relative in our jail just because of the problems. Or re recently, there's a former law enforcement officer that was sentenced to jail, and we're not going to keep them in our jail because there's there's too much potential for something very bad to happen. So we we pay and we house them out of county. But it's an individual thing. And you know the other thing I didn't really say. And let me, I, I, Ralph, I will get there in just a second. We've got copies of the video for you to look at. I encourage you, call me. We'll take you downtown. Myself or the lieutenant will take you out to the satellite, and you can see what we're talking about. We use two or three times the manpower per, per 100 inmates, or however you want to call it, downtown, and we don't, still don't have as good a supervision as we do at the satellite, and it goes to the design, and as you said, the fact that corners apparently were cut. Ralph? remember the great pride with which it was displayed and how it was the latest thing and how it was going to satisfy our needs for the next 50 years and all that. The building is only 30 years old. The corners were cut, but it is a solid building. There are lots of things wrong with it, but not everything has to be corrected immediately in order to make some use of it. It seems to me to be poor planning to throw away a building that's 30 years old and is good for another. That building is there. Converting it to a, an up-to-date jail is probably not feasible. You make a very if additional capacity is constructed, it probably should be constructed out here. All of your prisoners should be in. The yes, that would. Uh, we duplicate a lot of efforts because of the two facilities. The building down there could then be converted to other use. The county has need. Office function could be kept down there, so on and so forth. I would like to see, along with this very eloquent condemnation of the building, an equally eloquent uh, plan for salvage. That's, you're an engineer, so you'll understand this better than I do. You're an engineer, so you'll understand this better than me. Well, I'm not that kind of an engineer, but go ahead. Well, I mean, I don't know what it would take to rehab. I mean, yeah, we know what it'll take to keep the building operational, but I don't know what it would take in terms of to make it functional for some other use. Now, the good thing, if this was a, if this was a strong economy, and apparently it's getting a little stronger, that piece of real estate, it's got a great traffic count, it's got a great location, so there's certainly a lot of value there. But, you know. One of the things that they did, I was told, was they to your mic, Ralph. foundation for plan so that the, you speak into the microphone. The, the original Thank foundation you. was planned so that the jail could expand into the sky. And then they got cornered financially, so they did away with that. So now you cannot expand it to the sky. In other words, a lot of Pennywise, pound foolish planning went into it. And just as a, a cautionary to all of us, let's not do that again. I agree. If we're going to do it, let's do it right. And 20 years from now, somebody won't have to have this discussion with a new board. Astrid? It's a mundane question. How do people get up to that upper buck? And do people ever fall out of it? Um, people do fall out of it. Most people can get up there without difficulty. Uh, again, if we have uh, inmates who have some particular problems, with, you know, they're not as healthy as others, or they're older, more frail, then their housing assignment will be based in part on that frailty or that particular ailment, illness. And, uh, are you, will anything be done to improve the conditions of women prisoners before you get a new jail, or are they just sort of stuck for the duration? <sighs> I, I have two choices, I think, and I, I sort of talk about that. The problem, if you will, when the, when the satellite was designed, we have, have you been in it? Okay. The satellite is a podular, and there's basically two big pods sitting here with a common area here. Okay, these pods hold a lot of prisoners. They're, you can view each other, you can hear each other. I'm required by law to have sight and sound separation. If I were to take one of those pods and put ladies in it, 
I effectively have destroyed 40 beds. That I, now all of a sudden I don't know where to put the men. They'll be sleeping on top of each other, so it, it's a real dilemma. If I take take one of the smaller blocks out there, they're not big enough for all the women. So that even if I take one of them and we have properties come in and install barriers and things, which which again will lead to supervision problems. Well, let's say we do all that, then I'm going to have ladies sleeping on the floor because the segments are not big enough unless I open up the whole thing and then I destroy that many extra beds. I don't have a good answer. So I guess for now we're going to have to deal with it as best we can. The ladies are downtown in general. Other than that, we try not to use downtown. Mr. James? I have one other oh, question. Oh, yes. Go ahead and follow up. Uh, what do you think about these mandatory minimum sentences for nonviolent? Don't answer that. I'd like to. Don't answer it. <laughs> Mr. James. Well, I was just going to say, Sheriff, I've been through those buildings, as you know, several times, not as an inmate, but as a visitor. <laughs> uh, maybe in the back of the car twice. But my problem with all this, every time we talk about buildings, and, and I know this is going to be a process, which I appreciate, and I hope that we include the employees because uh, the designers, they look at it through what they've been taught. And like when we did the highway department, by including the employees, sometimes we get a different view of what, what is needed. But my overall concern, and John Jay and I have talked about this in many designs and many buildings, is once we have it, we don't maintain it. And when I look at some of these photos, uh, I take care of some apartments that were built in 1941. I mean, there's a lot of things always going wrong, always needing updated but we have a plan and we have a budget and we work within that. Uh, when I've done some of the tours, the paint, the bugs, the infestations, I mean, those are minor things in my mind that if, if the right tools were in place, the budget items and the painting, I think that every building should have a, a schedule of repairs. Uh, but with all that said, I know that'll come to it. There are those out in the public, when we talk about building jails, they have the attitude, that it doesn't have to be that nice because prisoners are there for a reason. I understand the safety issue. I truly appreciate that. But we're talking a lot of money that those that work out there are getting hit daily with a new tax or a new surcharge or a new penny tax for schools or what have you. And then we go to our own homes, which are falling apart. And we're saying, well, why can't they do better with what they have? And I heard Ralph speaking about there had been a, a deal when that building was built. I had a contractor today that was bending my ear. Uh, thanks, Al. But no, he didn't send him. But he did mention to me that that building, when he worked on it, had been made so that it could be elevated up to the best of his knowledge. He was one of the workers. Whether that's true or not, all of them are going around. But uh, all this, too, on one campus, I understand the need. But also, you're, I know there's video things in place and looking at that old building, my last comment's gonna be, when we moved out of the nursing home into the new one, and the new one needs some work now in my opinion, but the old one, what Elias has done with that building is remarkable. So things can be done. I mean, there's a lot of new stuff out there with uh, cameras, uh, reventing. I understand your dilemma with rehousing prisoners, but we're looking at a major dollar item, and I hope this board, like Ralph said, takes the time to study it, to look at it. Consultants, you're right. They're gonna give you an opinion. They get their paycheck and they're gone. We gotta live with it. So with that said, I just hope we move not so fast on this and that we move slowly and remember the times we are in. But I support you, Sheriff, because I do think your officers as a whole do a good job up there. Well, well thank you. and and I. I do agree. I mean, I, I really anticipate just our discussion is going to be months as we talk about options and go from there. I don't expect anything happening quickly. Carol? I, I wanted to ask uh, the facilities manager about the facilities report. I remember last year when we had to do the HVA system downtown, uh, that was the, I believe in that year, that was the only major repair that we did. Are there other major repairs that are necessary on the downtown jail right now? Um, yes, there are within the next three to five years. What, what kind of major repairs? Well, the major ones are included in my my report just coming up here after the sheriff finished. Okay. Mr. Quisenberry. I'm, I'm going to take a different tack that maybe Tom will allow you to answer the question, but um, I think I heard you say that um, 
folks who are driving on a suspended license are getting mandatory sentence and we're, we're housing them in our jail. How many, you know, just roughly, how many folks are we housing in our jail for offenses of that kind of magnitude? Uh, 5%, 10%? Oh, I would guess it's more than 10%. Uh, Lieutenant, you want to take a venture at that, what it would be today? Uh, on the DUS side of it, I would guess, and this is just a guess because those numbers do go up and down depending on the time of the year, maybe 30% of them are in there on the traffic offenses, such as the DUS. Yeah. Now, it is, it is in that NIC report. If you look towards the back, they've got some statistics to go through it, but a significant number are in there on DUS type things. But also, I mean, also DUIs and repeated DUIs that uh, for all of our safety probably need to be in jail. Other questions for the sheriff? Yes. Um, I'm going to sort of really jump the gun here. I mean, this is, don't, don't read too much into this question, but uh, I assume at the time the current uh, satellite jail was built, there was an estimate made in terms of the cost to add additional pods or to expand that facility. I know it was designed with expansion in mind. Can you or can anyone give us a general idea of sort of how much we would look at per bed or how much we'd look at per pod or something like that to expand that facility? And I'll tell you why I'm asking once I get a guess. I'm going to defer that to Alan. I don't know. I wasn't here then. I'm sorry. I do not have that number either. The only thing I can see is it was built to be added on to. That I do know. because What I was, was the total the cost of that facility and the number of beds? It was, it was a $10 million project in 1995. And it was anticipated that two additional pods, which would replace all of the beds downtown, yeah. and the sheriff's office, office operations, it's, it's designed to expand to include that. So it's got... But we've looked for a number, and well, we have not been able to find two, a number. It's got two pods now. It costs $10 million. Some right. of the stuff was obviously fixed cost. You wouldn't have to do again. So we can assume it's going to cost... It would cost less than $10 million to do two more pods, even in 2011 no. dollars. We're, what, what I've built into the Public Safety Sales Tax Fund is an anticipated $15 million bond issue in okay. 2014. Okay. Uh, the reason I the reason I made that point I've got a couple other brief points to make but I mean in the uh, in the sheriff's report here I mean he charted this out for the next just the, literally the next few years and identified as oh, potentially as much as almost two million dollars worth of repairs that might be necessary to this building so I mean I think if the board is moving in the direction eventually of expanding this facility you know. <laughs> sooner rather than later because frankly you know it looks like we're spending you know we're gonna end up wasting a lot of money on the current facility the longer that we wait i think that's something we need to keep in keep in, in uh, perspective uh a couple of things i don't want to go over territory that other people have covered but i i, I did want to thank i mean i think it needs to be reiterated that the sheriff and the judiciary and the state's attorney have done what, to my mind, is an amazing job working together to get by with what we have in terms of bed capacity. I mean, as you mentioned, we had 300, you know, we are trying to house 300 prisoners at one point. Uh, this was an issue that came up a number of times during my recent campaign, and, you know, I heard from a number of people in various uh, areas of the process, you know, how that the impact of things like alternative sentencing, home monitoring, uh, alternatives to incarceration have, have basically been the only reason why we've been able to get it by as long as we have. And so I think that's something we need to recognize. Uh, I was somewhat disappointed in this report, not in that, oh my God, things are so terrible, but I, I felt like it was almost deliberately inflammatory. I mean, there's language in here, that the deplorable conditions within the downtown facility. I mean, we saw the, we saw the video, we've seen the facility. You know, is the facility ideal? No. Is the facility obsolete? Yes. Is the facility inferior to 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 the new facility, which is you know 15 years old? You know, of course it is. You know, it's an older building. Uh, there were some clearly you know questionable decisions in retrospect made in the in the construction of that, and as, as a number of board members have pointed out, corners that were cut. But I'm not sure. You know, I'm, I'm not sure it does a whole lot of good to declare to characterize it as deplorable. Uh, the report says there are no, no programs for females downtown. Obviously, clearly that's not true. Uh, and I it just, I don't think we need to, I think we need to recognize this report as something, if this is what gets us moving on looking at this process, that's great. But I think, you know, it, we're right to take issue with the parts of this report that are wrong and not, you know, not uh, panic about this. 
And another issue I can say with report, I mean, they talk about housing. They're really the only options for option as far as I could tell as far as housing. They say basically you need to get prisoners out of the downtown jail immediately and essentially we should house them in trailers and construction, rented construction trailers, donated construction trailers. And I'm having Katrina, Katrina visions here. I mean, this does not seem like a workable short-term solution, let alone a long-term solution. I, I'll hope that you'll address that. Yep. And they don't even mention things like housing prisoners at other at other county jails. I understand that's expensive. I, you know, I watched them build the Ford County Jail with Champaign County tax dollars. So I understand that that's not something that we really want to do, but it is an option. It's not an option that's even indicated in the report. So I was, I guess, quite disappointed in the report. It seemed like there were numerous inaccuracies. Uh, it was sort of deliberately inflammatory and didn't really give us a whole lot of guidance. But I'll wrap up by saying I do think, you know, personally, I think it's important that we look to replacing the downtown jail. I think most of the other board members are in agreement. So, you know, I will appreciate any guidance that you'll be able to give us. Yeah, I, again, Al, this kind of goes to my opinion on the. These are these are experts in the field. I, I give them that they know what they're doing, but but they're familiar with brand new state of the art jails. This is what they do: is go around and consult and and build brand new jails. So, they see our facility and they didn't like it. I, if I would never suggest, I think contractors are going to come in and donate prefab buildings or trailers. And even if they did, we've got to plumb them, we've got to wire them, I've got to staff them, we've got to secure them. I, I really don't think that's a short term, a good short term answer at all. I think we're better, and I don't really like the fact we've got the ladies in this situation, but I, I don't see us having a viable alternative other than, at least for now, continuing with the downtown jail. I mean, almost I've pictured these same guys coming back. If, if, if they hadn't been here already and we'd adopted the solution on our own of housing people in you know, portable trailers in a, in a pen at the satellite jail, I can see them coming in and saying those are deplorable conditions for their own reasons. So I, I'm struggling with how we can put these sort of interim solutions. I think we need to maintain a sense of perspective and look to replace the downtown jail, but to do it right. Yeah, I, I agree. And in, in their defense, I asked them to come in. I asked them to give us a report. And in part, that's because Deb says, hey, the county board's interested now. We're, we've got the money. Let's talk about this. So, Thank you. Before Mr. Mosier, someone else who hasn't had a, an opportunity to talk. Have we still got the recommendations that were made when this building was built out here as far as it any planning about how those other pods be added on and I, I, I know they do somewhere I was around here when that I think happened but we should somewhere I, I, I'm kind of like Tom I, I assume we do somewhere I assume if somebody dug through maybe all of Denny's old stuff we'd find some at least rough sketches about how they envisioned it but I, I don't know I'm not going to be here, but after that courthouse fiasco with that old building, I feel like an old jail is like an old house. My dad used to say, you jack up the chimney and you put another one up. And that, to me, is the condition that thing's in. Because you can't cut corners in the beginning and fix it in the end. It just can't be done. Yeah. Mr. J. Uh, for just a little bit of humor, I would like, sh Sheriff, yes, are you sir. paying good attention to me, sir? I always do. Those four guys right there that you've got in jail, yeah. we don't want them in out of county. We'd like to get you to get them out of state. And those two over there, too. All of us in the back row would appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I see what you're saying now. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, on a ser Mr. Chairman, on a serious note, uh, I happen to I have. Think that was pretty serious. <laughs> <laughs> I I think Ralph uh, had something. Uh, you know, 35 years old. Uh, uh, if Mosier don't hit me here, uh, that's not very long for a brick and mortar building to last. And I argued, and I'm not going to belabor it because you've all heard the speech before. But Stan and I have argued and argued that we're not taking care of our buildings. And we wouldn't be looking at these costs that we were just referring to on the back if we'd have been taking care of that building for the last 35 years. But having said that, that's water on the bridge and we need to do whatever we need to do. Uh, and I do agree with, uh, with my colleague up here that uh, I, I took a little bit of offense when I was reading that, and, and Sheriff, I actually read it, believe it or not. Uh, it, it, 
the dirty walls, the dingy walls, God, I can give you guys some paint and you can fix that in a minute. Yeah, uh, you you can and gradually we are but we we have to have a whole block open so these guys can come in and work uh, for justin our maintenance guy spent the day in two of the two of the blocks downtown because right now we've got an empty fixing stuff can't you get the prisoners to do it for an extra chicken leg or something <laughs> you don't barter in your jails um we we do but but i don't want to get off topic but believe it or not in the last four years or so society has changed so much it used to be if we said to an inmate do you want to be a trustee we'll let you see a movie once a week and once a month we'll give you a piece of pizza or we'll give you some pizza they knocked down nancy's door to be on the list we literally got to a point where they'd rather lay around in their cell and we've now got to pay them a dollar a day to do it because we couldn't get enough to do it can i have a follow-up on that mr chairman sure. uh do we have any trustees at all anymore then Yes, we use trustees for the uh, the kitchen. There's probably 10 to 15 in the kitchen. And then they, they clean it up, and we call them floor trustees, and then they do the laundry. Thank you. Anyone else that hasn't had a chance to talk? Mr. O'Connor. Thanks, Tom. I just had one question. How many of these consultants live and pay taxes in Champaign County? Absolutely none. You've got to live 150 miles away to be a consultant. You know that. Um, I, I do encourage, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, what I was going to say before I dropped everything, I, I do encourage you guys, call me or call Lieutenant. We'll, we'll, we'll take the board members through both facilities as often as you want to. We've got the video. That is not a general invite to the entire community of, Champ, of Champaign County. It's, I, I don't want to be rude, but it's not Disneyland. We, we're not going to take everybody through, but, but you folks have to make the decisions, and I want you to have as much firsthand knowledge as you possibly can. Patsy? Um, if the four of you do end up going to this program, this week program, I do hope then that we set up a study session where you, the four of you can share what you learn so we can benefit from that as we then go through this process well, I would share with you Patsy that that is absolutely the intention is yeah. that everything that we learn is going to be shared now the written documentation everything is going to be shared there's no point in in doing it if we don't have all 27 folks invested with the same information and the good, the good news is this is free. NIC pays for all of us yeah. to go and pays for the school. It's not going to cost us uh, anything. But, but I, I would honestly, from my personal point of view, I'd like at least some, what do you want to call it, straw indication that you folks are interested before we all go do this. I'll deal with that in a minute. Um, I'm trying to see if anyone who hasn't had, did you, have you talked first? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have actually been in the satellite prison. I stopped by one day and um, was given a tour. Uh, and I would be uh, happy to go to the downtown jail to get a better perspective uh, looking at the video and the floor plan uh, isn't, I don't think, going to give me a good enough idea, somewhat. But So I would be more than happy to go down to the uh, downtown jail. I've also been, had the pleasure, uh, a professor took a class and I went with uh, in my class to Pontiac High Maximum Security Prison as well as Dwight, which is a, a prison designed specifically for women. And that prison, I don't know if you're familiar with it, is over a hundred years old. Um, I, I And we've purchased homes and remodeled them. I guess I'm one of those kind of people that says let's look into a remodel if at all possible I know that it's not a two by four wall that we're we're moving around and it's it's a it's a potentially bigger job but I would rather us try and figure out how if at all possible we could remodel and and work the semantics out with the downtown because um, I you know first of all we are still in down economy I don't know what we're gonna do with that downtown jail um, are we going to be able to sell it? Are we going to be able to get the city of Urbana interested in it? What what are we going to be able to do with this? And then the demolition of that building alone, if that's what needs to happen, is is going to be very very expensive. So before we you know move forward on constructing, uh, ad adding on to the satellite, I do want us to you know review any type of. Uh, remodel to that downtown. So I think that seems reasonable and fair before we move forward on anything else. 
Cer certainly it does. Uh, Stephen, you brought up something, and, and some of you know this, some of you may not. When Whatever you guys decide to do, when, when we consider a county jail, I want you to keep one thing in mind. A county jail is basically a maximum security prison. It is we have to hold all kinds of people so the whole place has to be maximum security we actually have inmates go to their lawyers and say get me sentenced to prison because I've got more freedom in prison than I do in a county jail that's just the nature it has to be designed and built that way if whatever we do Jan um, I would encourage people if they haven't been there I've, I've been in both facilities and uh, it Looking at the pictures is, is helpful, but I think you get a much better feel being in the building and what, what you can see and you can't see. And I, I feel, I, I hate to see 35 year old buildings just discarded too, but I guess I would think that we might consider other uses for it, but it, it would seem to be um, if we could have everything in this, the same area, it would be much, much, much better. Now, Mr. Kurtz. No? Nope. Okay. It, anyone else that hasn't had an opportunity to ask a question? I'm going to go to the second rounds for people who are interested. I'm going to go with Ms. Bergson and then Mr. James. Ann spoke earlier about when she was taken through the jail some years ago. The women had to take everything they were going to need with them in the morning and go to wherever they put them for the day and they couldn't go back to their rooms until evening no matter what they needed is that still true i i i may defer this to the lieutenant i'm assuming we're talking about where we close their individual cells to keep them in a day area where we can see them but lieutenant do you want to yeah, every morning they have to clean out their rooms whatever they think they're going to need throughout the day take it out into the day room and then we shut the doors behind them so that the, that officer that's looking through that window can see everybody or hope to see everybody that's in the block. If those doors were open, uh, they would be in there all day and the officers would not be able to see and we'd have to have more manpower in order for uh, the officers to physically go inside of the block uh, just the way that facility is designed. What happens, excuse me folks, if they catch a cold they start their period? Do they have to know they're going to in advance? No, we, I mean, we will let them back in their room or give them supplies, whatever they will need. Um, if they have a cold, medical will see them. And we do make exceptions for uh, inmates that have medical issues. Now, Mr. James. So you're talking on this week trip that you're all going to be going on. Where was that going to be? And are they going to be showing you, like, building designs? Or are they just going to be walking you through some of the jail standards for today it's it's in aurora colorado um there is a new facility i don't, I don't know if it's in aurora or an adjacent county that they use in as example I, I think of a lot of it though stan is classroom type work and education like that so tom if you can't make it let me know okay. other questions thank you sheriff um a great deal um, for the presentation thank you. Um, yeah. this is thank you a process and it, it's no one is going to be making a decision tonight about we're building a facility at the satellite we're tearing down the downtown we're reconfiguring we have none we have none of the information to make a final decision of that nature. What this is a process, and I hope everyone stays engaged in the process, reads the papers. Um, I think the, re the NIC report was actually very interesting because I think it stimulates, it lights a fire under the board, even though there's things that people don't like in there, to make us address this issue. And it's pretty easy not to address issues and then let it sit there for 10 more years after we've been sued by this one and that one, um, and then finally address it. I, I don't want us to do that. I want us to have the discussion and come up with a plan and follow through with it, even, even if it's a plan that I'm not in love with or we're all not in love with, but a plan that gets us from point A to point B. Um, 
and the, the real point of the whole thing is we want our jail staff to be able to perform their functions in a safe, sanitary, healthy environment. We want to protect the safety of the inmates. This is not just um, a, a situation where you want to just protect the employees. It can be a very risky environment for all parties. Penological standards change over a period of 35 years. Housing standards change over a period of 35 years. Um, building codes change. So that it's, it's not something that should shock us that this facility is, is not state-of-the-art at this point. We know it's not state-of-the-art. The question is where do we go? Um, I, I do want to hear from our facilities director. His, his um, report you, you have this evening, if you could briefly share it with the board members. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> it's uh, the last two pages of the uh, handout show the report I prepared. Um, to answer the questions earlier about uh, what needs to be done, um, I tried to give you a very, very brief history of the building from 1980 to current standards, picking out just the major, major issues that were done um, and a few of the major faults. I, I'm not going to read this to you, but um, since night. Uh, since my predecessor, my boss, told me from the day I started back in 1981 that probably we started remodeling this building the day the paint dried, or before the paint dried. We were actually cutting holes in block walls, making access panels so we could access the plumbing. Uh, they put fixtures in places we couldn't even access, and so there's no way we could repair them. But throughout the years, um, the mid-80s and 90s, adding more beds and, and uh, the major equipment that's been repaired and or been replaced. Uh, so um, on the second and third page are seven major items that have been addressed and brought to your attention by past uh, um, studies and or current pricings that I've So um, it looks like, well, we are going to uh, probably within the next three to five years spend between 15, 1 million five or 1 million eight on this building, just on roofs, uh, locks, if we keep going, using it as this facility, not to mention the money we need to put in on paint, uh, pest control, a few other things that were mentioned tonight. So if there's any questions, I would be happy to uh, answer them. Mr. Nudo. You know, I, I guess uh, I know there's a, a feeling that we should work with the existing building, but I know from talking to uh, construction people that it's sometimes, most of the time, more expensive to uh, retro a building than it is to scrape it and start over. I, I, had, I had an example of the old train station uh, in downtown Champaign where somebody wanted to move in there. We brought in a construction company and, and he basically said to him, I'd be better off just scraping it and I can duplicate it for you. I can build the same station that you see here, give it some historic feeling, but the cost is going to be about 20 to 25 percent more because of retro code and, and some of the impediments that old buildings just did not, uh, do not have in today's world. So I, I can appreciate what you're saying there. I would just also caution everybody that the land under that building has intrinsic value, and maybe right not now because of commercial values, but Ultimately, it has some value to somebody who needs to be near a courthouse, and that money could be used toward retiring bond debt or reducing the amount of bonding that we have if we do decide to build a, uh, something onto the satellite. So that being said, uh, it, there's, two, I mean, there's two ways of looking at it, and I'm glad that we would take the approach of getting an expert in here and tell us which way is the most economical. I, there's a, one other issue, and that is the duplication of staff. I mean. You talk about the, the staff that's involved with um, uh, covering two different buildings. Uh, I'm sure with the number of restrooms that you have to duplicate, the number of conference rooms you have to duplicate, those kinds of things that staff uh, only needs one of or less of uh, with one single building, you got to look at the whole picture. So I, I realize what we're saying about preserving buildings only 30 years old, but sometimes a building has obsolescence before its time. Thank you. 
Mr. Alex. I just wanted to apologize. When I was waving this around earlier, referring, I referred to it as the Sheriff's Report. It is, in fact, the Facilities Director's Report, and uh, we appreciate the information. It's very useful. Thank you. Ms. Evans. I appreciate the uh, list in the back of this packet for us. Um, I'm looking at that, and I think you just gave us a estimated cost of what it would be in the probably about 1.5 million to repair the building the that, current building yes that is correct and to build a new building is going to cost considerably more <coughs> it will cost considerably more than that yes and then on top of the building of the new building you'll then have these same kind of maintenance issues 10 years later that we have with this building we will still have to deal with the roof we'll have to deal with paint We'll have to deal with some of the same repairs. If standards change on jails and locks, we'll have. So what I'm suggesting is that even if you build a new building, brand new, I just remodeled my bathroom, did it from scratch, took everything out, redid it. However, I still have to maintain the facility that I just built. And you will have roofs, locks, whatever other things change in 10, 15 years on the new building i.e. what we have on the satellite jail right now. I would like to see really, and I think we talked about this when we, um, last year when we was talking about the HVA system. I understand and I want to say on the record that these issues are not new issues to my attention. They're not new issues. The desire to build a new building, an extension on this satellite jail is not a new issue. This is a continuing issue. So the plan date to finish by a certain time has been already set. I would admonish the um, board members to A, look at some of the other facilities within our uh, local area, see how much money they have to do on those jails, meaning re maintaining them in our local area so that we do some kind of cost comparison, as well as looking at our staffing report that is in the um, I mean, not staffing report, inmate report that is in the um, institute, what is it, the National Institute, the Department of Justice that just came and did that report. The numbers are going down. They weren't going up. So I understand what the sheriff is saying that, you know, at any given time, you could have influx of numbers similar to what we have when we have our nursing home. It goes up and down based on circumstances, people die, whatever the case may be. But I have not seen where we other than not repairing the facility, well, we cannot repair this facility. And I'm, I'm of the opinion that a building that's 30 years old, from all visual looking, meaning from the outside, the building looks in great shape. From the inside, of course, and I've been in both facilities, from the inside, obviously it needs some work. And so I, I would like to really see a lot of study sessions done. I would like for us to have some public sessions so the public uh, and I have received emails and texts about the downtown jail. They were not positive. So <laughs> I know that the conditions need repair and the complaints weren't that um, they couldn't be repaired, but that they weren't repaired. And so I would like for us to also make this process um, not a permanent direction that we're automatically going to build a jail because that's what I've heard from a lot of members tonight. Well, let's see what we can do with that building. Let's start working on this one. Um, and then I would like for the county board, the administration, to present to the public exactly where we're going to get all this money from. So that those are my comments on the current situation. Mr. Mosher. I watched this board kick the can down the road on an old jail, on a youth detention center, and a courthouse. And it always gets down to where somebody has put a gun to your head and said, you got to do something. When you get in that position, your options are pretty limited. But somewhere along the line, somebody's got to say, we're not going to kick it any further. We're going to fix it. And it's been an embarrassment, really, to you and me both. We watched the new jail and the youth detention center and the courthouse and the nursing home just get pushed right to the edge before we did something and then in the case of that building down there mistakes were made because they didn't have the money and they had to do something and then we sent prisoners out of here for 10 years to other places and paid and paid and paid and we finally got a referendum through on that jail a new one 
we built that youth detention center on a wing and a prayer thinking that quarter cent might pass and we'd have a way out on that and it did pass and we had a way out on the courthouse and I don't know what the way out on this is but sooner or later somebody's got to sit down and make a decision and do it and this board hasn't done it for 30 years that being said <laughs> I think we are going to do something. I think we are going to discuss it. We are going to strategize. We're going to figure out as a group where we're going, what we want. We're not going to kick the can down 10 years. Um, that's irresponsible. So on, on that, Mr. Mosier, you and I are in total agreement. I was here for most of those projects, and I know they were crisis management pro projects, and some of them came out really, really good. Others imperfect uh, to put it mildly tonight's the first night we've had the big discussion about this stuff there's going to be more and I totally agree with Patsy that we're going to have study sessions and I agree with Carol there was going to be study sessions in which we have to have the public invested in this with the public needs to understand that there is a problem why there is a problem what the possible cures are. We have lots of folks at the University of Illinois and in, the, in this community that have knowledge about penology and criminology and buildings. So I think we should pull in some of the expertise that exists in this community to take a look at um, some of these issues. I don't think anyone ha has concluded there is one solution and only one solution um, to this situation. If anyone has, um, share it with me. Um, I just I don't think there's one single solution yet but I think this has been very very useful tonight one of the things I would like to do so that it becomes a permanent part of the record is I want these reports received and placed on file so that it's part of the record mr. Quisenberry so moved second second by mr. Langenheim discussion all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. those opposed the same next steps this is going to stay on the agenda and it's not going to die. And at, at, at some point, you know, we are going to go to this conference, bring back information, hopefully have a study session, hopefully plan the next series of study sessions in which we get that input, get more information, maybe the direction of what kind of public study we need, the finances, what, depending on what we decide. That will decide what kind of financial you know we know that there's some money that comes what what year in 2015 and, and uh, from the quarter cent if you're going to do something with that money for this purpose the planning has to be well underway because you don't plan a facility in in six weeks it doesn't happen um, any further business yes I move adjournment is there a second? Second. <laughs> We're adjourned. <laughs>